Hey developers, today we're gonna to look at 10 tips for new Vue.js developers. So these tips are all the combination of things I've learned in the last few years. They're great for new beginners and developers just starting out with Vue. And actually, if you've been using Vue for a little while, I think these will also help you out as well. Before we get too far, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Let me tell you guys a little bit about MongoDB. So if you're not familiar with it, MongoDB is a document database. It's really scalable, it's flexible. Essentially, MongoDB stores data in these JSON-like documents, and it makes it really easy to make ad hoc queries. You can index, you can aggregate, aggregate the data pretty easily, and it's 100% free to use. So you can download it and use it on your own server, or you can use something like MongoDB Atlas and have it hosted in the cloud. So I want you guys to click on the link in the description below. You can learn all about MongoDB and download it 100% for free. So just click on that link in the description and thank you for my, once again to MongoDB. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I am a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book published by Manning. I'll put a link in the description below if you guys wanna check that out. You can get the first chapter for free and has a lot of information about how to start with Vue. All right, here's my 10 tips. I'm gonna start with number one, and this might be obvious for people who've been in the Vue ecosystem for a while, but the official documentation is great. So if you are starting off with Vue, make sure you check out the official docs. Look at the official style guide as well. That can be often missed when you're just looking at the official documentation. The style guide has like best practices in it, and it has a lot of great information of how you should structure your Vue apps. And then Chris Fritz uh, is an amazing developer. He has the Enterprise Boilerplate project, and that has a, a lot of really great information. Uh, it's a project where he puts his best practices in it. He does a couple of really fun things in there too. Check it out. It's the Chris Fritz Enterprise Boilerplate. You can Google it and take a look at how he sets up his Vue.js apps. And he's a core team member, by the way. Of a Vue.js core team member, and, and he does a lot of documentation, things like that. So that's where I would start. And also, you know, check out my book too. That helps. So yeah, here's like the, the first paragraph of the style guide on the Vue.js style guide. So it's for Vue-specific code. Um, it's a great way to avoid errors. Uh, if you're doing some bike shedding, that's where you kind of argue over little tiny pieces uh, l argument of small things that really don't matter and anti-patterns. Um, it's not ideal for all teams and projects, so mindful deviations are encouraged based on past experience and surrounding tech stack and personal values. But for the most part, we also avoid suggestions about JavaScript and HTML. So that's a little bit of intro into the style guide for Vue.js. So check that out. So number two is testing. I mentioned this too. I did a video on Angular, top 10 for new developers for Angular. I think this goes a this is, this is kind of universal with any JavaScript framework that you should probably get used to and understand how to do the testing in it. The view test utils are the way to go. It's kind of built in already. It makes it really simple to create temp test cases. You actually can mount different components. And then when you do the setup of a new view project, you get the option of using Jest or Mocha. Uh, Jest is great because you could do like snapshots, things like that. I've used Mocha for a while as well. And then, uh, you know, make sure to make at least one validation test to get used to creating tests. So I would highly recommend when you start learning Vue, you know, don't forget about doing testing. So here's an example uh, out of the official Vue documentation, by the way, of how to do a test. This is like you see here, you can do a shallow mount. If you, by the way, if you're coming from React, this should look familiar to you from the testing libraries in React. So you can do a shallow mount of the hello component and then you can like set data on it. You can find, basically do any kind of uh, CSS type selectors to find different things. You can check to see if they're true or false. And uh, yeah, you can just make really simple test case like this. And then you can use expect to make sure that it passes. So if you are getting into Vue, the first thing you're probably gonna be doing is downloading Vue, the Vue CLI, and the latest versions of Vue CLI have something called Vue UI. So both of these tools make Vue development that much easier. So why would you be interested in Vue UI? It's basically a complete graphical interface that you can use when you're creating your Vue app. 
So one thing I know I like about it is I don't always know the best libraries for everything. And so here's, here's by the way, what it looks like. Uh, you have this project dashboard. This is the view UI. You can um, click, you can set up your projects in it. You can create new projects. There's actually a plugins button too. So if you don't know, like I don't know like the best view validation library for forms, I can go to plugins. I can search for different plugins. I can search for GraphQL plugins and it has one button, one click installs. And it just makes it really easy to, to manage your dependencies and, and keep in track of it. And it also has some other cool tools. I don't have all the screenshots here. You can actually see a visualization of your memory usage and things like that. So it's, it's definitely worth doing, uh, using view CLI. If you're not inter interested in the UI, you can just create projects real quickly with view CLI. It'll ask you some questions about, you know, do you want to use and end testing? And then it recommends you should probably use Cypress or Nightwatch. If you want to do testing, you should use Mocha or, 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 uh, chest. So it gives you options and walks you through the procedure of creating a new view project, which makes it really simple. And if you don't want to use either one of these, you can actually just use the view script tag, pop it into your HTML project and run a view project, uh, a view app really quickly and get up and running. it. And that's what I do a lot of my tutorials. I just throw a script tag in so I can get started quickly. So there's a lot of options here. If you're new, you should learn these. Props. So uh, you can pass informations from your components with props. Uh, so you pass information via props and then you can emit events back. So if you're coming from any other framework, you probably have this concept of like passing information in and Angular, you have like these input and outputs. This is the same thing. Uh, you need to learn this because you want to have smart components that take information in and do things with it. So like here's an example, you can actually do validation in your props. And this is part of the style guide that they recommend that you set like required and you can put like validators on it to make sure it validates. And if these fail, then you'll get errors that you'll see in your console. So it's a good idea and a good practice to have props and set up anything that you're passing into your components. You set up these props correctly. Vuex. So, um, and in other platforms like Angular, maybe uh, even in React, you have these state management systems, and they're flux like these flux like systems like Redux, or if you're an Angular NGRX. And usually the boilerplate on those are pretty bad. There's a lot of things you have to do. I have used Vuex, and I think it's much simpler to set up, and it's much easier. So I think in most projects, when you start having the issue where you have multiple components and then you need to start passing information between the two, that you really should look for and grab Vuex to start doing that. It's not in all circumstances, but I think you can use Vuex more often um, than you would maybe in some other projects where if you add in like a Redux or NGRX to your to your project, you end up getting so much bloat and it's so complicated. Vuex is not like that at all. And uh, one really caveat too, I've seen in a couple of forums, people give advice and they're like, you know, just put everything, if you want to share stuff in between different components, put everything in the this dot dollar sign root. And it's really kind of bad practice. It should... View actually prefer for global state management instead of this dot root of, glo uh, of a global event bus. I know there's a lot of things. If you start looking at the view API, you'll find there's a lot of neat things you can do um, with the API that really goes beyond what you see in the official documentation. But not, it's not always a good idea to do that. And of course, you don't have any reactivity if you put it on this dot root. I would just you know bite the bullet and add Vuex to your project. And if you're a beginner. I would just start off with Vuex. It's just a really simple pattern that you could start using. And when your components start getting larger, you'll need to do it. If you'll notice, if you ever have like one component that's talking to another component that's talking to another component, and you have these chain of components and you need to share information and you're passing back things three or four levels deep, you might start thinking about Vuex as well. So here's an example, um, a kind of, just a short example, you can have a state object, you have mutations, you have actions, and uh, you can then reference that inside your inside your uh, components. And so uh, let's talk about different types of components. So when you start off, you'll be looking at single file components. That's the ones you usually set up with your view CLI. 
that one has your template at the top then you have your script tag and then you have your CSS at the bottom it's all on one page by the way if you're coming from angular or a different framework that has those split up into different pages you can uh, or files you can do that pretty easily too that's not impossible to do in Vue.js if that's your preference uh, so uh, another type of component is a functional component and this is good to know uh, functional components is a special single file component. It's basically a component that is stateless, meaning no script tag, and only accepts props in order to display data. So it looks like this. So you have that template and it says functional next to it. This is good to know because uh, if you have, if you need something more, need the whole reactivity system of Vue.js, then you wouldn't want to use this. Um, but if you have a, just a really simple component, just pop it in a template, pass the props in. This will be really quick to render. It's really fast. Um, although view in general is really fast, but this is even faster. And when you get more complicated apps, you'll notice some speed issues, but this is just a real easy way to, to put it in there. You don't need a script tag, just put functional and it just ever does everything for you. Uh, there is also the render function and there's also renderless, uh, renderless components, but we won't get into that today. If you're interested in renderless components, you can actually make components that don't render anything, but return things that are kind of neat, but a render function. So this is a little bit more advanced, but I think beginners, it's good to kind of understand because we want to peel down the layers of Vue.js so we can understand a little bit more than what we see in the official documentation. And this is a great way of doing it. So uh, the official documentation by this says, Vue recommends using templates to build your HTML in the vast majority of cases. The, um, there are situations, however, where you really need the full power of pragmatic power of JavaScript. That's where you, you can use the render function at closer to the compile alternative to templates. So if the idiomatic way of, of creating Vue is you have the, you're using basically single file components, you're using the template at the top, then you, you have the script tag and the, and the CSS and you're kind of writing it that way. And then you have all your normal things you've probably seen before. We have props, you have computer properties, watch methods, things like that. Uh, but you can actually have your template just be in this little render function here. So you have this render H, it's, you might see create element in some places. And then you have div, it sort of looks like JSX, it isn't, but it's just the way that you can actually get a JSX plugin if you're coming from the rack world. But this is sort of similar where you can kind of have these nodes and you put them together this way. And then this would render on the screen for you instead of having the template tag at the top. So kind of getting an idea of how this works is a good way to to uh, to learn. So lazy loading routes. So this is uh, it, very interesting. Uh, I put this at the same thing in the Angular world. In Vue CLI 3, all lazily loaded chunks will be prefetched by default and it decreases the bundle size. So it's it, once again, it's just so easy to add into your app. Why not add it? And you, um, for example, right here, you have the const routes and you have this, this is basically what it looks like. You have the component and you have the import where you have the route component dot view. And this is essentially how you would do your routing. It's just really simple to set up and everything will uh, be prefetched by default, meaning that's going to be super fast. It's going to reduce your bundle sizes. So might as well do it. Computed properties. This is something you don't always have in other, um, in other frameworks like uh, Angular doesn't have the uh, computer properties. So computer properties can be used to do quick calculation of properties that are displayed in the view. These calculations will be cached and only updated when needed. That's the important part is they're actually cached and only updated when needed. So if you have a computer property that's attached to your template, don't worry, it's not going to be running a million times in the background. It's going to be running once and then it's going to be cached unless it changes. So this is a really cool thing you can, this is a basic one you can do like, you can re you could split and reverse and join a string. You can put this right into the into your template, and then it'll do this every time. Um, it'll display on the screen there. It's just really simple. I believe in React, you can do some similar things with hooks, but I'm not entirely sure. And now, uh, cool view projects. So um, once you start deep diving into view, you'll notice that the whole ecosystem will come available for you. So there is things called grid sum, which is more of a I just did a video on it. It's a static site generator that is for Jamstack websites. So it has this really cool plugin data architecture with a GraphQL backend 
which allows you to create really cool sites uh, quickly and and efficiently. And some people compare it to Gatsby JS. There's ViewPress, which is great for like documentation type sites. Um, it has a built-in markdown into it. Um, there's you can by, by the way both grid some of ViewPress people create blogs out of those um, are easy. Viewify is more of a graphics component library that you can install. Uh, Nuxt is your single uh, SSR server-side rendered app, so it has every all the goodies inside View. It's a view-based server-side rendered application to help generate those type of applications. And then there's like Viewlidate and Viewlidate, and those are kind of for forms and things like that. Uh, there's a lot more, but you can see that the ecosystem is growing and there's a lot of cool and neat things out there. So that's all I have for you guys today. I'd love to hear what you think I missed today if you're a new developer. Obviously, there's I didn't mention slots. I think that's one thing that I could have added to this list. Uh, and there's there's some neat things you can do with watchers. But I think this this is good for now. Let me know if I've missed anything in the comments below. And if you guys have any questions, leave a comment. I appreciate it. Take care.